Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back. Uh, obviously, we're joined here by uh, Alex. Uh, Alex, welcome to the LA Kings. And uh, if you don't mind, just take a minute and introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about your hockey background. Well, thank you. And I'm super excited uh, to be a part of the Kings organization. Um, yeah, I'm uh, a kid from New Jersey. Um, played hockey since I was three. My dad played in college, so kind of fell in love with the game from him. Um, yeah, just grew up. Uh, playing for my local team, fell in love with the game, was able to continue on to the high school, um, and then out in the USHL last year with Des Moines, which is an awesome organization. Um, and now this year, uh, I'm at in my I'm at college in, at Harvard. So, so are you um, are you on campus right now? Uh, I was on campus up until Sunday. I left to come home to be with my family for for the draft, um, and then I'm actually going to head out to uh, Des Moines as uh, again. Um, on Saturday uh, for the beginning of the year, since obviously COVID pushed everything in college back until January at least. So, so when you say uh, pushed college back to at least January, is that from a, a hockey standpoint? Are you have you are you taking classes now via Zoom? Um, yeah, well, everything at Harvard's online right now. Um, they were allowing freshmen to be on campus for the beginning of the year or for the first semester, I should say, and then. Um, uh, yeah, until January, that's that's when they gave the sports kind of that that date. They were like, nothing can happen until January 1st. Um, so just taking it day by day. And um, uh, we're being optimistic about the college season happening then, but yeah. I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that yet. Talk a little bit about the uh, the transition into the classroom. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, Harvard's reputation is is second to none. Uh, yeah, it was definitely difficult at first. Last year, I was uh, out in Des Moines taking online school, so I guess it kind of kind of familiar with the online setting. But it, it's definitely a lot harder than than that was. Um, just the workload's pretty pretty heavy, but um, it's been manageable so far. So, and did uh, I, I think if I heard correctly uh, on the broadcast today, uh, your dad briefly attended Princeton. Yeah, yeah. My dad went to Princeton for freshman year um, and then transferred to Boston College. Um, he's from Massachusetts, so that was kind of um, a no-brainer for him. You know, uh, always grew up wanting to go there. So, uh, yeah, kind of interesting with the uh, with the Ivies. And then my little brother actually just committed to Brown for lacrosse. So got a awesome. little rivalry going there now, too. Absolutely. Well, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the draft experience for you. Uh, obviously, you know, you get a phone call, you know, I would say it would go without saying that you were watching uh, the live show. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's definitely a little different than people were expecting, but um, still, still amazing. I was, yeah, just sitting on my couch in my living room with my family and um, it was actually on my phone and my name popped up and my little brother just started going nuts. So uh, that was, that was funny. Um, but yeah, just kind of waiting waiting and seeing what uh, what was going to happen, kind of seeing my buddy's names pop up, which was good to see. So, um, yeah, it was just kind of surreal. You know, we come into the second and final day of the draft. Uh, you know, it, it's a long day for everyone involved, but from where you're sitting, you know, pick after pick, um, how long was the day for you up until you got that good news? Oh, yeah, it was definitely long. I mean, um, the picks kept feeling like they were getting longer and longer. Um, but yeah, just kept staying calm. And I knew, um, I knew that at some point it, it was going to come. So um, just kind of staying calm and, and waiting. Did you have, uh, you know, to the best of your recollection, going through the process, a lot of contact with the Kings, you know, uh, conversations. Uh, did you have a sense that, you know, they were watching you um, maybe any different than any other team or, or not necessarily? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely knew um, that they were one of the teams that was interested in me more than than a lot of others. Uh, I had a couple Zoom calls with them. Um, um, I got a, a lot of nice messages from them as well, just throughout like the the end of the season and and definitely in quarantine. Like I was, uh, I had a Zoom call with them. Um, yeah, and just phone calls, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so I, I was hoping it was going to be LA. So so it was definitely a nice a nice outcome. Have you been to Los Angeles before? No, I haven't, but I'm excited to, to get out there. Your skill set as a player, uh, just kind of talk through what you think are, are some of your strengths and then also maybe focus on what you feel uh, you need to, you know, for lack of a better phrase, you know, get better at. 
Oh uh, yeah, I think I'm definitely a smart player. I think um, my hockey IQ is is one of the uh, best areas of my game. Um, I uh, I think my shot is is another part of my game that um, is, is very helpful. And yeah, just kind of my my brain being able to see plays that other people don't, um, and just kind of seeing where my teammates are going to be or or where I th um, where I need to get to get the puck. Um, so I think that's definitely my strong suit. And then. Um, I think just being able to get bigger and stronger um, is definitely something that I'm focusing on now. Um, just kind of still getting used to my big body. I had a, had a nice little growth spurt uh, a couple of years ago. So just being able to fill my body out um, to be able to compete with the guys that are much bigger than me is what I'm been focusing on. When you were talking about some of your attributes there, um, one of the words that I, I thought you might hit on that you didn't, that, that I've seen associated with you is the word patience is your uh, your ability um, on the ice, you know, to, to see a, a play develop, um, et cetera. Is that also something you feel uh, very good about? Yeah. Well, I think that ties into like my hockey IQ, just being able to, to see where the play is developing and, and what's going to be happening in that play. Um, yeah. So I think definitely a little patient and, and seeing where I need to go to, to make that play happen. New Jersey native, uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your development in the Garden State there, uh, you know, how you think it helped to get you to where you're at right now. Um, yeah, it was definitely um, extremely helpful. Growing up, I played on the New Jersey Colonials. Um, I played with um, a lot of great players like John Farinacci, Marshall Warren, uh, Ryan Seedham, Alex Gaffney, guys who are drafted or playing in college right now. So, um, being able to have that core group of guys, we played together for like eight years. Um, so just being able to grow up with those guys and feed off of them um, definitely helped with like developing my game. Um, and then going to the uh, New Jersey Avalanche, um, more of like a professional, like they ran us like pros. Um, definitely a lot of developing there. Um, great coaching staff, Larry Robbins, Vinny Smith, Mark Latito. Um, yeah, it just helped me a lot. And they have a lot of great connections, which got me into like prep school in the USHL. So it definitely helped a lot. And I think the natural question would be Devils fan, but uh, well, obviously you're a Kings fan now. Uh, but uh, who did you follow uh, teams and, and any particular uh, pro hockey players that you really uh, admired from a distance? Oh, yeah. Well, now I'm definitely a Kings fan. But uh, growing up, my dad's from Massachusetts. So I just grew up an all Boston sports fan. Um, I know a lot of people from New Jersey kind of hate that. Um, but uh but it's definitely something that um, has helped a lot because they're very, very successful team. So getting to watch the players and how they, how they carry themselves um, to, to gain that success helped a lot. Um, so a guy I look after is uh, Patrice Bergeron. Um, just growing up watching him my, pretty much my entire life, just the way he handles himself on and off the ice is something that I definitely keep, keep a close eye on. Outstanding. And we'll, and we'll end here with, uh, you know, just one more sort of, you know, pure hockey question. Uh, you know, he had a very good offensive season, uh, more than a point per game this past season. Uh, your development to this point, maybe just the last uh, X number of months, do you feel you really took a, a big leap forward? Yeah, I think definitely the, um, the quarantine helped a lot, being able to just put mass on my body. Um, like I said, that's one of the areas that I was trying to focus on the most and kind of just getting a heavier base. So yeah, I think um, these past couple months have been very helpful to me just to fill out my body. Outstanding. Alex, look forward to meeting you. Look forward to your first visit to Los Angeles in the, uh, at the appropriate time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe.